My guest today is Irma Mesa. Irma, how are you? Doing really well. Got my coffee and I'm ready for ready to chat with David. Yeah, it sounds right. good. It's three o'clock in the afternoon and you're still <laughs> drinking coffee. Yes, that's how it works over here. <laughs> that's right. Uh, what is the Spanish word for coffee? Um, cafecito. So, you tell, small what, espresso what's drink. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I want to talk to you about because because you, you have a business called yes. caf- called Meat Cafecito. I think it's. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. Yeah, so Cafecito, you can find it at meetcafecito.com. But, uh, you know, I, I've been working remotely since 2017. Uh, now everybody's pretty much working remote, as uh, David and I were talking about. Um, but I started it mainly to fill this sort of void and need to socialize as a remote worker. Um, when you're working from home, it's super, you know, I'm going to use the word lonely because I think everybody's feeling that right now. Um, but lonely, it's uh, isolating and it's not very good for mental health, physical health, and just us as humans. So I ended up coming up with um, a product to solve my own problem, which today is called Cavacito. What we do is that you sign up, you can be an entrepreneur, um, a engineer, product manager, you can meet other tech creatives, and it's just 30 minutes of your day. You sign up, we match you based on your interests, and you jump into a video call that we're kind of doing right now uh, together on this on this Microsoft Teams chat. Um, and you have a great conversation for 30 minutes, taking a break from your from your day, which is the the main impact that I'm trying to make, is just can we can we take a small break in your day um, right. and get you away from from your your task, which is super important for energy productivity. Um, and yeah, we're really impacting a lot of people, so it's it's really exciting. Okay, so uh, we're having our conversation right now over uh, Microsoft Teams, and I had one a couple of days ago over Zoom. What does Cafecito add that those products don't? Um, so we actually use for video, we use a third party. Uh, service uh, through an API called daily.co. Uh, we don't really see ourselves as a video chat platform because we don't build any ch- sort of chat tools okay. like video. So we leverage other folks who have done it well and know how to do it way better than us. Our technology really lies with our algorithm. Our algorithm um, has been kind of in the process of being built and being used and tested uh, since July. Our algorithm essentially takes a look at your data profile that you, you give us when you sign up. And we take your data points around interests, your role, your industry and use all of that to find somebody who's uh, like-minded or or differently oh. minded if you don't want to meet folks like you. Uh, so that's our main core technology. Um, and yeah, we're we're definitely uh, you know definitely different from uh, a, a chat platform, uh, more focused on the human and providing a space for people to to chat and and. Network. Okay. Oh, I get that. Oh, no, that makes sense to me. And, I, and by the way, there is no there are no folks like me. So it's prob- that problem is solved. It's going to be kind uh, of hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it sounds like, I, so when, when I sign up for Cafecito, then I tell you some things about myself. You know, what are my interests? What are my likes? What what are the people that I want to interact with? And then uh, and then your algorithm will connect you with strangers. So I'm not, I'm not talking to my friends. I'm not talking to my coworkers. I'm talking right. to new people that your algorithm says there's a good chance, based on how you answer these questions, that you might hit it off. Yes, correct. Oh, and yeah. uh, my our focus right now is very much on quality. Um, we, you are giving us your time for 30 minutes, and I want to make sure that these conversations that you're in are valuable. Uh, and so our main focus is making sure our algorithm is we're, we're starting to use AI and machine learning to sort of start to understand who you like talking to um, and making sure that over time your matches are getting better and better um, is like a huge goal for me right now. Oh, tell me a little about that algorithm and how you're using machine learning. Um, so right now it's at a very low level, lightweight. Um, but we, uh, after we match you, we match you up. You get information about who you're meeting, can check out their profiles, why you were matched, and then after the call happens, we don't just let you go off and you know come back next week. But we want to get some data from you. So that data right. is through a feedback form, and the feedback form asks you really important questions like, how much did you enjoy your chat? It's a five one to five scale. Um, how relevant was your match? do you want to meet with this person in the future? And how did you feel after your call? And so we use the different data points so that tied to your profile, we have these different quality relevancy scores, uh, feedback scores. And over time, we'll start to learn more about who you're giving those fives to versus the ones. And um, this, is, this is all tied to this like big web of like interests, related interests, related job industries that Usually we'll conversate well together. So for example, if you put somebody who's a designer with, um, 
you know, maybe a product manager, they would probably have a good conversation, at least at the industry and the role level. Um, so the more that we learn that you like those folks to talk to over time, we can keep making sure that your quality matches are, are you know, hitting those four and five numbers, um, right. ideally, <laughs> after the call. Sure. Yeah. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, tell me a little about the tools that you're using. Like, are you writing code to perform this algorithm or do you have some sort of tool that um, assists you? Yeah. So for the algorithm, I actually um, had to hire um, a developer. So I work with a developer right now out of Mexico City. Um, and he's been really awesome and just like getting in there, building your algorithm. We've tweaked it a ton. We used to match, you know, first on I think it was interest, but now we sort of start the matching process on, let's look at for people that share um, share industries and then from there share interests and really try to, mm. you know, narrow that connection even just to a really, really like uh, fine level. And uh, that's the main tool, like the sort of the, that, that main piece of technology was built from scratch um, by this developer that I work with. Um, apart from that, I launched this back in March and I sort of hacked everything together on my own because I wanted to just validate it and see if it could work. So I used a few no-code tools like Zapier and Airtable as my database, which is super fun. Um, I'm not but, sure of those tools. Yeah, yeah, so they're very much like um, easy to easy to stand up, get some okay. quick feedback. Um, and now we're sort of trying trying to move away from these no-code tools and into more of a you know having a back end, having a built out front end uh, with mm -hmm. React, um, and kind of getting I guess more official and able to scale, <laughs> um, so that all the different algorithms, uh, the workflows, the automations are all running um, through one single one single system that is not relying on a bunch of third party uh, no code tools. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. So you've answered some of my questions here. So you're using the, the air table for your database and yes. something called Zapier. Zapier. Uh, what does that do? It, it allows you to create automation. So you can automate, for example, if you know, uh, you want you have an app like Gmail and you you're looking for this certain um, result from Gmail, you can set up an automation that says like, all right, if David emails me, this is a, a really simple example, but if David emails me and he's a really big client of ours, not related to my product, but if he's a really big client of ours, send a notification to my Slack. So it's essentially oh, okay. a, um, it's a, a builder for automations. Yeah. Yeah. For workflow. Workflow. Yeah. Like, like, like if this, then that. That's, that's yes, exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I've heard of that. Uh, and uh, <laughs> react for uh, the front end stuff. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Cool, and you, you launched it in March, and here we are, the end of August. How's it going so far? Um, so far, it's going it's going good. We're we're growing steadily. I, I wouldn't say that we're you know skyrocketing, but I think that I kind of stepping back and looking at why like not why we're sky, not skyrocketing, but the benefits of not skyrocketing is that I can really focus on with the quality. Um, right. There's competitors of mine that sort of have skyrocketed, and now their quality is a little shaky. So I want to make sure that when I do get to that level, or even bigger than that, or maybe I won't, but my focus is like quality first, because um, I'm, I'm all about the user experience and I want to make sure folks are enjoying their their time. Uh, and it's, right now we have about 500 um, members today. Okay. Um, so looking to get that to a thousand hopefully before the end of the year, but that takes a lot of work and time and uh, marketing efforts and outreach. So um, it's going good so far. We have a really great you know team. Some of them are helping me. Um, I'm really passionate about the future of where this can go. So um, it's really cool to just be working on a product that has gotten traction and um, hearing from people that use it and how much they like it and, you know, sending me emails on, hey, we want this feature. We want to, you know, have an easier way to schedule. We want to have a way to have, you know, um, ad hoc coffee breaks if I'm available and somebody else is available. Let's just jump, jump on a call. Um, so, yeah, getting really good feedback from folks. And I think that's a good sign um, that people yeah. are engaged for sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the map of where your users are, and uh, yeah. you've got what uh, looks like five continents represented here. Uh, not yeah. much love for Antarctica so far, yeah. <laughs> and, are, uh, yeah, and Africa's are. being neglected. But other than that, I mean, there are Australia yeah. and Southeast Asia and uh, South Asia, all over yeah. Europe and all over North America. A few in the in South America. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really a global um, a global community product right now. It's it's really awesome. I never thought it would get. Uh, to the point where there would be a, uh, people from every, everywhere using it. I My initial thinking when I launched this was just, it was just going to be a little like product in Indianapolis that folks who worked remotely could just like meet for coffee and that was right. it. Um, and due to COVID, things sort of shifted over to a virtual 
virtual product, which is awesome because I've been able to reach so many more people than I probably um, would have ever been able to. Well, that's interesting. So you actually started this before the pandemic and the shutdown. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you just shifted yes. when uh, they, they, this is this is one of those uh, ideas that actually have, probably has more traction due to the pandemic. As opposed yeah. to if open up a coffee shop, for example, in March. Right. Bad right. timing. Yes. Uh, how about uh, marketing? How are you getting the word out about this? So, so far it's been organic. Um, I, I launched on Product Hunt, which is um, a place where a bunch of products are featured there. You can launch your product. That really helped for some traction. Um, we've been mentioned on a few newsletters and uh, folks that are using the product, writing about it on LinkedIn or Twitter. So it's been our main source of uh, marketing today and kind of bringing in more users. Um, in the future, I do want to figure out a bigger marketing strategy, strategy and uh, figuring out like what are those channels like Twitter, Quora, LinkedIn that would work really well for this product that's more um, based on that casual networking, tech folk, uh, international sort of targets there. So um, that's kind of what we've been doing. It's very, it's been organic word of mouth um, and a few, a few shares on 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 different uh, newsletters, which has, which has definitely given us more more traffic. Uh, yeah, speaking of the international aspect of this, are there any language barriers, or is it all in English, or how does that work? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, I am still trying to figure out exactly how to um, account for that. Um, today, most folks that have calls, they are in some way English speaking. Um, it might not be their primary language, but it is in their um, repertoire. Um, but I would love to get to a point where, you know, maybe your profile, it'll say, this is my primary language, English is secondary. Um, and you could then tailor, if you want to meet with folks um, that are from other countries and sort of have that expectation that you might be meeting with somebody um, whose language isn't English um, oh, okay. as a primary. Yeah, but right now we don't, we, I don't have a, a good way to account for that today, but I haven't had any issues. I've only had one issue, I believe, where somebody reached out and said it was kind of like hard to communicate with the, the person on the other, other oh, side yeah. of the call. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, I used to do a lot of travel, and uh, uh, generally speaking, I just I realized I lucked out being born in an English-speaking country, because yeah. the rest of the world has come about uh, as sort of uh, adopted my language. I didn't exactly. do anything to deserve that, but <laughs> here I am. Yeah, <laughs> here I am. And, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah, you could, I, I, yeah, you could support uh, I don't know Spanish, Arabic, uh, some of the yeah. very popular languages around the world as well. I would even see, like, imagine if, like, I could meet you on a call and I, I don't speak English at all and I'm speaking in my native tongue, but there's some, like, that translation would be happening. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> uh, well, that's this is an issue with 500 users yet, but uh, have you thought about scalability when this thing starts to get big? How are you going to handle that? Um, so I have thought about it, and that's sort of the reason why right now our, our one of the main focuses, again, is the quality piece, so the algorithm. So the algorithm... If we can get to that to a point where it can start running um, and learning at a at a a level that um, can inform matches over time, um, that will allow us to scale. And then on top of that, we're also trying to um, build out the actual app itself at the moment. So um, kind of moving away from these tools that I mentioned, which want to really allow us to scale um, as fast at least or support the demand. Uh, so I'm hoping before the end of the year we'll have. We'll be. I'll be able to answer that question super clearly okay. and say yes. We can. We can scale, um, and we're ready to do so. Uh, but right now, it it might be a little shaky if you were to reach. You know, if tomorrow we got, you know, let's say uh, five thousand more people, it might be a little shaky to um, to yeah, just bring them on board and make sure they they had a okay. good experience. So I have been playing around playing around with the idea of just adding a wait list until I get to the point where I'm confident enough to say, cool, yeah, we can scale because we. We've taken the time to build out these different um, processes in the back end, and we're mm -hmm. we're set. So I've been playing around with that idea a little bit here and there to see if maybe maybe that's a good option. But yeah, where where are you hosting this? Um, we're using AWS right now. Okay, I'm not for... there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I work for Microsoft, but this is not I, a Microsoft yeah. show. This is <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So you have you have some scalability options there. And I think you said you're you're outsourcing the the video part of it. Somebody mm -hmm. else is doing yeah. the video chat, and that's of course the 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 real meat of the processing power that you yeah. probably yeah. won't have to worry about. Well, that's somebody else's problem. Hopefully, I hopefully I won't. Hopefully I won't. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe I'll get to the point where I'll have to we'll have to build it our own. But 
right now we're using uh, daily.co um, and just leveraging their API for, for the video. So we can just like grab their, their video. They take care of everything. Like all we have to do is embed the video uh, okay. and, and generate new links every time we have a new meeting. And okay. um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So it's been super, it was super simple to set up. It's like less than a day. And right now I'm sort of looking for, you know, a lot of the things that we do, it's, uh, what can we do quickly? Um, what will also give us the, the 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 greatest return as well from the user perspective, but also like moving forward as um, as a company. So um, we're very small right now, but hopefully, you know, as we get more more folks using our products, more feedback, better matches, um, they can really start to expand a lot more. Tell me about your uh, revenue model. So my revenue model does not exist today. Um, <laughs> so, so it's is, all free. Um, it is all free. Um, I'm currently kind of calling this the beta so that, you know, um, I want to make, again, it's kind of going back to the product and the, the, the scalability. I want to make sure I get to that fairly soon so that I can implement that revenue model. Um, but if I, when I do um, get to the point of putting in a revenue model, it will probably be a freemium sort of setup where okay. um, you'll have potentially 14 days to try out Cafecito, have a few matches, see if it's a right fit for you. And if, you're enjoying who you're meeting um and then from there sort of trying to convert them over to a premium user and that would give you you know ways to literally say who you want to meet if i'm david and i want to meet just engineers um in <laughs> in chicago like having these really really clear uh criteria that you can choose from so making it super super custom would be sort of a, a more premium uh feature that that i would try to get folks to convert to uh to make sure that their experience can be super tailored to them. Yeah, that'll be a good day when you start to go to that freemium model and you start to make money instead of spending money. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It, being sort of a first time first time founder, um, I have realized how important it is to, uh, if you wanna scale something, like also making sure that you're making some sort of, some sort of revenue from it. Um, Cause it's really hard, it's really stressful and it's really difficult to, to run a free product. I do enjoy doing it of course, but um, I would definitely want to shoot for at least making some sort of revenue every month so that I can support keeping it alive. Um, sure. And then viability wise, just making sure that it's, it's, it's a good fit for the market as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at the website right now. It's cafecito, or I'm sorry, meetcafecito.com. And yes. that's where I sign up here or yeah. get early access. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should? Um, I mean, I'm happy to talk about sort of this B2B product that uh oh okay so uh, if I, we were talking off camera yeah. that right now it's more of a business or is a consumer to consumer product right yeah. now yeah and it's evolving eventually into a business to business product yeah please tell me about that yeah so the business to business is uh is is almost at a prototype stage so we're going to have something fairly soon to start t piloting with um companies and really the core problem that we'll be solving solving for that is uh, helping people ops essentially onboard and um, engage their new hires who have never worked remotely before. Um, I know it's like as a remote worker, it was super difficult <laughs> starting my job as a, as remote as, as a work from home person and right. figuring out, you know, what my day to day is going to look like, how am I going to interact with my employees or not my employees, my coworkers, um, managers, and how am I going to get to know them? How can I get to know who David is on my team versus David just codes, right? right? So that is sort of the problem that we're going to be solving. And then the ROI for people ops would be to have, they're going to have data to actually say, cool, these are my most active uh, folks that are using Cafecito, um, which they're folks that are engaging, um, signing up every week, maybe every month. They're meeting people from every department. They're very super active versus folks that may not be as engaged. So what we'll be able to do is essentially support people ops so they don't have to spend time in creating programs and programs and testing them, but instead they can just look at the data and start to figure out, you know, can I talk with the manager to, to help the sales team interact more with engineering? Or can I set up some mental health stipends to help maybe the engineering team who actually doesn't use Cafecito at all, <laughs> see if they, if they want to, you know, interact with other coworkers, see if we can get kind of push them into, um, uh, other sort of resources and well-being resources that they can use. Um, and really, it's the retention piece. Like right now, um, people that are working remote, it's extremely hard if it's, if, it's, if you're doing it for the first time. Um, and companies are going to start to lose them if they can't keep them engaged, if they, if they can't sort of bring them along in this bigger vision of what the company is. And, mm -hmm. and if they can't really prioritize the sort of mental health aspect, 
the social aspect, the diversity and inclusion aspect of running a company. Um, I think it's going to be super important that companies really, really pay attention to how employees are humans first and the outcome for the company is sort of like a secondary thing, even though it's super important for business a business to succeed, but it's also super, super important to make sure that David, Irma, on these different th- teams in your company are showing up as your best self, their best selves to work and are not showing up burnt out and tired and, right. you know, not super energetic about the fact that they're going to be logging onto their computer and working on their own for eight hours. Like those are all the feelings that employees are feeling, not all of them, but there's many more, but many employees are feeling that today and they don't have somewhere to go to. So if Cabecito could sort of like bridge that gap and at the same time help an employee and a company Mm -hmm. retain and also engage their employees, um, that's sort of the impact that we we want to make there. Um, But we're still probably have a prototype ready uh, at the, in early September and start doing some pilot testing and just iterating oh. on on what folks what folks need and want. Well, early September is next week, so that's uh, right yeah, around the corner. Yeah, we in are. Fact, this, this video will be out uh, in <laughs> September sometime, I think. Uh, um, yeah, we're trying to hit this August thirty first um, date, so uh, we'll see. I'll let you know. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, the, the sounds. I mean, I I totally agree with you. The um, not only mental health is obviously important to individuals and to society, but also turnover at companies is an expensive thing. It, it really yeah. is. And the tech industry has really high turnover, uh, which is uh, you know the industry that I think that that tends to be early adopters of things like this. And um, and there's a lot of reasons why people leave companies, and one of them is not feeling connected. You know, I'm. My all my coworkers are in Redmond, Washington, and it's really hard to stay connected with them, even yeah. when we used to travel. So it's a challenge. Yeah. So there's, a challenge. it's not only awesome, but there's dollars and cents involved in it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm super excited. Uh, and that is, uh, yeah, that product we're we're part of a uh, of a fellowship right now, so that we have a few fellows, design fellow, uh, a front end developer fellow, and a product manager fellow who are sort of helping push that prototype and build that prototype I, out. I you um, say fellows. Yes. Yeah, so there are folks that um, they lost their internships during the COVID time. Um, so we worked with a organization called the Moringa Fellowship and they essentially, um, they had folks apply to it, picked three fellows that wanted to learn more about design and product management and development. Um, and so they're sort of, they took on our project as a way to, to learn and, uh, you know, work on an MVP, <laughs> see it come to life, um, and soon hopefully, you know, get into testing with some companies there. So, um, yeah, it's been really cool. These last few months have been super challenging, but also great to to be working with like really amazing developers um, and talking to users, and it's, it's been really cool. Uh, that is cool. I had never heard of the Moringa Fellowship before, but I just went to their website, and who do you think I see right in the middle of page one here is Erma Mesa. Oh, sweet. I didn't know that. <laughs> I have not been on their website recently. That's cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, there's your picture right there. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> well, excellent. Um, that would just about a time. What, uh, any last words? Awesome. No, thank you for, I mean, thank you for having me on. This is super fun. Uh, yes. And fun as well. I'm excited to watch future ones of these as well. This is a, I like that they're short. I like that, you know, uh, we're talking about tech and, um, friends and the society and it's it's a, a great kind of like all, all around uh time uh, to be and t- just talking to, to you which is really cool hey what a school it was a joy talking to you thank you awesome thank you so much right now you might be at home and sort of craving that socialization that you used to have at the office uh, my product and Project Capacito is a really great platform and tool for you to use to make new friends with folks in technology and with folks that are really excited to just meet new people from all over the globe.